So I use a lot of add-ons to speed up my Blender workflow, and they save me a lot of time. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 of my favorites. Ones I'm going to show you are part of Blender extensions, so you can easily install and use them. Okay, let's jump into it. So if any of these add-ons, you can just go to get extensions and then type the name in here and it should pop up and then you can just click on install on any of these. So to use this, all we have to do is press shift A and just add in any light and then you can press this shortcut which is for me shift R and then it brings you into this mode and you can move it around, position it to a nice spot, then you can press control and right click change the power, change the size, maybe we can make it a disc as well. And then we can just duplicate this, shift R again, and position this over here. Control right click, and let's change it down to like 100. Say I want to select this light that's making like the eye and this side of the monkey really bright. Hold down Alt, and then right click, and it will select the light that is casting that light. Now if you like making nature scenes like me, this add-on is really helpful. You can find it in the end panel under Easy Tree. You can select a preset and a season and then just click Add Tree and we'll add that sort of tree. And then you can see in rendered view that it looks pretty good. And if we head over to the modifier properties, you can see we also have a bunch of options because this is actually made in geometry nodes. So we can easily change like the trunk height, the tree top height like levels of branches, gravity, that's actually pretty cool, and a whole bunch of other stuff. One of my favorite features is that you can actually add a wind to this, and you can see it sways to the wind, and you can like, you can like change the wind speed and the wind strength. Gosh, it looks like it's in a hurricane. So say you're making a really cool shader, and you want to use this on a bunch of other objects. So you can open up the end panel and then go down to hot node. We can select all our nodes, click new, and we can just name this something. And then say we're on another object, we can just click get and then it adds all those nodes in and we can just plug that in and then we have that same setup. You can also make different node packs and they can have different nodes in them. Here's a painterly shader I made. We can drop that in. And this is really helpful because it also saves it over different blend files. So you can have a totally different blend file and it still has these nodes in it and you can use them again and again. So while we're talking about nodes, let's also have a look at this next one which is called Node Arrange. So say you have a super messy node setup that you want to organize super fast but you don't want to spend heaps of time moving all of these nodes into the correct spot. You can select everything and then just click Arrange Selected and look at that, super neat. We can also change the spacing to something like 30 and arrange it again, just makes it a bit tighter. Yeah, so this add-on is just super helpful and it's a massive time saver. Next up we have my own add-on, which is super awesome and I'm totally not biased on. Yeah, so download it now, or else you'll never be able to get rid of the default cube. <laughs> um, yeah, but seriously, it's super helpful if you use rigid bodies a lot. You can super easily add rigid bodies to your scene, and it's just a massive time saver. I also recently added a floating UI panel, which you can enable by pressing the U key by default. But you can change that in settings to like something like Z and then you can press that as well. And one of my favorite things about Quick Rigid is you can actually add presets. So say you have a object with heaps of bounciness, no friction, and it's like the weight of my dumbbells. And maybe you even have the sim speed turned up to like four, and you can see what happens there. We can actually add this as a preset, and we can name it whatever we want, like, and then just click okay, and it creates that preset. And then say we have another, object like a sphere and it is heaps different in its settings we can just click that preset and then it applies all those settings this one's also actually super helpful it allows you to easily switch between different editors like i can just switch between the uv editor the image editor you know maybe i want to go to the shader editor we can head over to the graph editor, like, oh, you want to change some, change some graphs. 
then just head straight back over to the viewport. Bang. You can also switch workspaces. So you want to do some sculpting and away we go. Then we can head right back to our normal layout. And the default shortcut is set to Alt or Option Command R and yeah. Scatter objects is also super helpful if you're working with nature scenes and stuff like that. You can scatter grasses and trees super easily. All you have to do is select two objects, go up to the object panel and down to scatter objects. Now you can just draw around and you can see we have some object proxies generated. We can actually change the density by going up to this little tool panel up the top over here. You can change like the density, like the distance between them bit of rotation, randomness, all that sort of stuff. And now you have a bunch of tiny little Suzannes. This one's pretty simple, but it is pretty helpful. It basically just tracks the time you've spent working on a scene. It's got quite a few options like sessions and settings. And yeah, it's pretty simple, but it is pretty helpful if you want to track the amount of time you spent on a Blender file. This one's super helpful if you're using PBR materials a lot. It's called Parallax, and you can find it just by searching in the node editor and just searching for Parallax. Then you can put in your displacement map and plug the vector into the vector of your images, and you can see what it's doing there. It's adding a bit of depth. You can change the strength of it. It looks like it's being deformed a lot, but it's actually not being deformed at all. You can see it's still completely flat. You can also plug this into a bump node and then plug the bump into the principled BSDF and you can also yeah, just adjust that. Yeah, this is a really handy add-on for materials. I use the Ambient CG website heaps to get high quality textures and it can be a pain downloading them from the website and setting them all up. Instead, with this add-on, you can just download them from Blender and it automatically adds a fully set up material. So basically, on the Ambient CG website, you can search for a material, click into it, copy its name, and then put it into the add-on's material name socket here. One thing you do have to be a bit careful with is the name actually kind of spaces in it. So we can just delete that space. Then you can select the resolution and just click fetch and create material. Then once that's done, you can go to the material dropdown and you should have a concrete 031. Then you can open that up and you can see we have all the right nodes connected to the principled BSDF with a proper mapping and UV setup and we can easily change this. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. Hopefully I showed you an add-on that you have never seen before or you would find helpful. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.